Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat in which we would look at this CPA questions that was sent to me from one of my subscribers from farhatlectures.com. The subscriber wanted me to go over this question in details to see how we came up with the answer. So let's go ahead and take a look at this question. And the question of the problem reads, which of the following is the amount of goodwill that should be recognized as the result of the business combination. So simply put, do you know how to compute the amount of goodwill? That's basically what we are being asked to do. First of all, do you know what goodwill is? Well, goodwill is the amount that you paid that's above and beyond the fair, the fair market value of the net identifiable asset. So when you buy a company, you would look at their fair value. You would look at their fair value, fair market value to be more specific fair market value including all identifiable asset whether they are on the books or you can identify them let's assume just for the sake of simplicity you looked at a company and the net the, the net asset fair value to be more specific net asset and when we say net asset just i want to make sure you understand what this net asset is when we heard the word net assets it means you are subtracting something from assets what are you subtracting it's assets minus liabilities that gives us net asset and if you hopefully you know this that net asset is the same thing as equity same thing as the equity because assets minus liability equal to equity so what we do is we look at the fair value of net assets simply put we look at our assets from a fair value perspective we look at our liabilities from a fair value perspective we take the difference and we find the net asset so let's assume for a particular company we found that the net asset is 70 dollars so this is how much this company is worth based on the fair value of the net identifiable assets and i happen to pay rather than a hundred dollar i wanted to pay 90 dollars for this company well guess what here's what i did I paid $90, I paid $70 for all the net identifiable, all the assets, fair, net assets, fair value, including assets that, that I identified. They did, they did not have, but I was able to identify, and there's some left. What's left is $20. I cannot identify with any particular asset. This asset, I call it goodwill, basically the remaining. Now, why did I pay this $20 extra above and beyond? I don't know. Maybe the location of the company, maybe the reputation of the company, maybe their customer list, maybe maybe I, I, I like the pe the man their management team. I'm not sure, but it's something that I paid for and I cannot identify. I cannot put down on the balance sheet as an asset. Okay, so that's basically the remaining is goodwill. So hopefully you know what goodwill is. Let's take a look at the question and see if we can answer this question. So on January 1st, 2006, Red Corporation purchased 80% of shots. So we have R and S, uh, $10, $10 par value common stock, and we paid 975 on that date. The carrying amount of the Shaw net asset was a million. So the book value equal to 1 million. The book value means uh, net assets minus, uh, I'm sorry, assets minus liabilities at book value equal to a million. The fair value of Shaw's identifiable assets and liabilities were the same as the carrying amount except for a plant asset which is worth $100,000 in excess of the carrying value. What we're saying is this, the the uh, the fair value remember this is the book value of the net asset so this is net asset book value when we look at net asset fair market value well we know we have a hundred thousand dollar extra so equal to one million that's the one million with the book value plus it seems our our assets uh, our plant asset are under undervalued, uh, not undervalued, they're reported simply at cost. When we report them at fair market value, it's worth 100,000. Therefore, the net asset fair market value is 1,100,000. Also on this problem, they told you the fair value of the 20% non-controlling interest was properly determined to be $200,000. Now here they gave you more information than they should, but you wanna make sure you understand what you are giving. Here's what we're saying, you bought a company. Here's the company. You purchased 80% of this company. 
and the remaining 20% obviously you did not buy you only bought 80% and what they told you is this they told you this 20% component is worth 200,000 and you paid you paid you paid 975 for the 80 percent well i can tell you <laughs> this company is worth those two amounts together which is 1 million 1 million dollars so this is the fair value of the company how did i know this look they already told you the uh, the down controlling interest is 200,000 they already told you uh, uh, the uh, the uh, you paid 975 for 80 percent so bear in mind, if they don't give you the non-controlling interest, you have to find out what is the fair value of the company itself. How would you find the fair value of the company itself? Here's what you would do. And hopefully you watch that show on CNBC Shark Tank. And basically, if you paid, if you paid 975,000, 975,000, 975,000, and you paid, and you paid for 80%, for the company so the company must be worth 1,218,750 that's if you were not giving the non-controlling interest but they gave you the non-controlling interest okay so here kind of kind of the numbers don't make perfect sense but hey this is what you are giving you'll work with that don't assume the fair value is 1,215,000 because they already told you the fair value of the uh, non-controlling interest well then the company is worth if you paid 975 then the company is worth the 80 percent is 975 and the remaining is 20 percent because we assume this is an arm length transaction you are not told otherwise so the fair market value of the company is 1,917,000 so the company is worth 1,100,000 the fair market value of the company is worth this much of this amount, of this amount, we know, we know that one hundred thousand dollar of this amount is 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 part. Well, let's first, uh, if we take this fair market value, we subtract it from the book value of a million right here. We subtract it from a from the book value. We know we paid access of one hundred and seventy five thousand dollar, or the company has a fair market value in excess of one seventy five. Well, here's what I can do. I would know. That we already we, we we are already told that one hundred thousand of this excess amount is for plant asset. Well, the remaining is seventy five, and they didn't tell us anything about the remaining. Well, if they don't tell us anything, the seventy five thousand must have been goodwill because you know I identified one hundred thousand of the extra value in property, plant, and equipment. The remaining is goodwill because you know I cannot identify any other asset. I cannot identify any other asset. Another way to look at this, I, it, it's better if you look at it this way. Uh, but another way to look at this, I mean, always use this method. I just want you to understand that we paid, if, if we break this company into two components, 80 and 20, 80 and 20, I paid, I just want you to, for, for, from an understanding perspective, understandings perspective you paid 975 and you paid 80 percent the book value of this 80 percent equal to 800,000 how did I know the book value 800,000 if I take a million because the book value is a million if I multiply I purchase 80 percent I purchase for 800,000 so if I take the difference between my 80 percent and the book value 80 percent there's an excess of 175 you know, again, I can break it down 100 to the uh, property, plant and equipment, plant asset and the remaining 75 is for my goodwill. Always use this method. It just I want you to understand it just like from an understanding perspective. Just make sure you know that you are buying 80 percent. You have to value the whole company. The whole company kind of they gave you the 200,000. You have to be careful because they gave it to you. But if they did not give you the 200,000, then you will have to find out what's the value of the company by using the shark tank technique, taking 975 divided by 80 percent. And you will find that the remaining the company is worth one million uh, two hundred. Let me see. Let's do it again. So this way you can see what I'm doing here. So if I take 975,000 divided by 
that's the total value of the company. I purchased 80%. I, I paid 975. Kind of, I just want to show you that why did I come up with this number? Although this 1,218,750 is not used here because they made our life easy. How did they make our life easy? Kind of, they make it easy and tricky. Just that's why you have to be very careful. They gave you the fair value of the goodwill. And what you paid is the fair value. Together is the total fair value of the company. Now, so the answer is 75,000. That's, that's, that's simply, that's, that's basically it. Now, what do I offer? Like you looked at this question, you see how I solved it. Like, what do I offer? What do Farhat lectures offer? For example, this consolidation topic is covered in every CPA course I offer, whether it's your taken Becker, Roger, Wiley, uh, Glime, it doesn't matter. Also, I do have an advanced accounting course where you can learn consolidation from A to Z. Let's assume you took you went to college long time ago and you forgot about consolidation. That's no problem. I can show you consolidation starting from A to Z, from acquisition to post acquisition, how to consolidate the income statement and the balance sheet. Because the CPA firm, uh, sorry, the CPA prep companies, they don't teach you this. The CPA prep company assumes you know it, and they will show you how to complete certain steps in consolidation. I don't assume that. I teach you and that's the difference or you you learn it recently but you didn't get it properly or if you're taking advanced accounting and need supplemental material this is where i can help you i mean i have exercises i have true false multiple choice that's going to help you to prepare for this topic so when you take your cpa exam your cpa exam prep course wiley or becker or whatever they're not or listed on this page you're comfortable with this you study for your cpa exam once it's a lifetime investment don't short change yourself. My fee, my subscription is practically nominal. You are investing in a lifetime career. Take it seriously. Study hard. Good luck and stay safe.